Tonga up against Hong Kong, folks. You'll have to excuse my voice. I've got some kind of throat thing going on at the moment. But um, yeah, this weekend, the only game, like international game that I'm aware of that's on, is uh, Tonga up against Hong Kong in a do-or-die Rugby World Cup qualifier. Well, I say do-or-die because uh, whoever wins this game goes through to the Rugby World Cup. And whoever loses this one is not quite out, but they will... Uh, Go through to the repechage up against the likes of Portugal, USA, and uh, Kenya. So it's Tonga up against Hong Kong. We're going to go over the lineups, how you can watch, and uh, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts. Remember, Tonga just came off a, uh, a losing run in the Pacific Nations Cup, and uh, they've named a kind of, I don't want to say less than full strength lineup, but some of the names you might expect to see for a big game like this are not there. For the Hong Kong guys, goodness me, like I don't know many of these guys at all. I've Googled a few of them and some of them kind of vaguely ring bells, but um, I'm kind of clutching at straws with the Hong Kong lineup. So if anyone's got any insights into them, I will certainly uh, take them. Uh, this game is being broadcast for you guys in Australia because the game is being played on the Sunshine Coast, I think. Um, it's uh, being played on Stan, which is kind of familiar because all the rugby's on Stan. But for the rest of the world, like World Rugby initially said it was going to be on Sky in New Zealand. That's incorrect. I asked Sky and they said no. It's on a streaming service called Clutch, which I've never used before. If you're in Hong Kong, it's free. You guys can go to Clutch and uh, and watch it for free. If you're in New Zealand, I think it was three ninety nine, And uh, if you're in the rest of the world, it's like 8 bucks to watch this game. I think 8 bucks Australian because it's an Australian streaming service. Just quietly, I uh, signed up to the service using my VPN, put myself in Hong Kong, so I'm going to watch it at the Hong Kong price, which was free. So uh, if you guys want a VPN, I use one all the time for all kinds of geo-blocked rugby stuff. Link down in the description to Express. Honestly, it's, uh, it's a very useful tool for lots of stuff on the internet, not just rugby, but um, I find it yeah very useful because so much stuff is just geo-blocked these days. Um, for, for Tonga, I don't think they've, I don't think they've played Hong Kong before. And as I said, they, they had a wee bit of a losing run in the Pacific Nations Cup, but, um, you'd expect for a game like this, some of the big guns like Fekitoa, Puto, and, uh, Folau, who've, um, you know, recently made their way into the Tongan team would be available for this one, but Folau picked up an injury in that first game. So he's out for a wee while, a hamstring injury. Puto apparently was only ever signed up for two games for the Tongan campaign in the Pacific Nations Cup, so I'm assuming he's back at his club. And uh, Fikitoa injured himself as well, so he's back uh, at his club doing rest and recovery as well. So some of the big names you might have expected are not there. Uh, Lopeti Tamani apparently uh, made himself available for this game, but then was um, failed on a fitness test. So, yeah, some of the big names you might look to... Uh, to see are um, certainly not available. But that being said, there's still a few big gun players in this Tongan squad, and they will go into this one as big favourites. There's the 16th team in the world up against 21st, but um, a lot of the Hong Kong guys, from my understanding, are kind of semi-professional players, whereas the Tongan squad's pretty much a team full of pros. Uh, Fisi Hoi, Maile, and Tami Afuna are the front row. So there's two changes in the Tonga front row compared to what we saw in their last Pacific Nations Cup games with Maile and Fisi Hoi coming into the starting lineup. Ben, Big Ben, uh, he continues on to tight head, so that's going to be one for the Hong Kong guys to watch out for because he's a big unit, and if you're not on form, he'll dominate at scrum time. Fafita and Losi is the same second row, so that's at least a good bit of continuity. Uh, Hala Funua is uh, at 6, so he's back into the 23. Funaki continues on at 7. And then Sioni Havili is uh, uh, there at number 8. So uh, he's played on the bench in the last one. So largely, these are all guys that uh, featured in the Pacific Nations Cup. Coach Kefu is uh, certainly rotating things around a bit to make sure everyone gets some game time. So uh, it's kind of more of the same here. Takalua is back into the 23. Remember, he, he virtually never misses a Tongan game. But uh, he's back at halfback, and he is captain for this one. I'm assuming this is the kind of game that he wouldn't miss for the world. William Harvili is still there at 10. Remember, I think he got one game at fullback, but has uh, been preferred at 10 for, for Coach Kefu. Uh, Paya and Taumotpio are the midfields. That's kind of same-same, which is good. That's one area you would like to get a bit of cohesion and kind of continuity. Tima Fango Nuku 
uh, Angelo Tuitavuki and uh, Toulouse Vayanu are the back three. Vayanu didn't feature much in the Pacific Nations Cup, barring coming off the bench in the last game. But he is a proper game breaker if you give him any space. So uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent looking uh, Tongan team. Like I said, despite the results in the Pacific Nations Cup, they've still got some good, uh, big game breakers. Molly Lolo here and Tokolahi are the front row replacements. Paya Tupulotu are the uh, 19 and 20, plus uh, Manu Paya is at 21, so it's Samisi at 19. And then uh, Faiva, that's James, and then uh, Malsia is uh, the kind of two uh, fly half and outside back replacements. I mean, Malsia had a had a crack at fullback last time, and Faiva will probably take 10 if um, he comes on in place of William Havili, who's kind of able to move around wherever he likes, right? So... I mean, honestly, looking at that Tongan squad, they should absolutely be looking to dominate at more time. That's absolutely where they got a lot of pay in the Pacific Nations Cup. Uh, if you're a team of professional rugby players who've been playing together for a few weeks now, and you're up against the semi-pro team, who by all accounts, I don't know much about Hong Kong rugby, but have had to kind of uh, prepare their guys in the last couple of months for their Asian um, what's it called, a Asian Championship Cup or something, where they, they beat Korea, um, a bunch of debutants for them, so, uh, you know, a bit of a scratched up, you know, scratched together, a scratch squad, you know what I mean, a, a team that's been brought together kind of last minute, so, um, and a lot of these guys are professionals, like fully professional rugby players, is my understanding, so, malls, I would expect lots of malls from Tonga, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, for the Hong Kong squad, uh, Smith, Post, and Solo Mona uh, are the front rows. So um, only Post uh, is in the same jersey number as the team that beat Hong Kong. If you missed it, it's on YouTube. But I watched the game. Uh, Hong Kong up against Korea. They beat them 23-21 uh, in Korea for the Asian Champions Cup. Or apologies if that's the wrong name. Um, but uh, yeah, they had a guy red carded in the first minute. So they essentially played the whole game with 14 men, but they still managed to get a win with kind of a last-minute penalty. Um, interestingly, their squad also kind of got a bit of pay with the old mall. So maybe that's an area of strength. I don't know. But I do think they're going to be up against it against the Tongan boys in that regard. But um, yeah, they got a mall try and then a second try from... One of the backs got a try, but after the mall, it kind of got them advantage. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, but uh, yeah, a little bit of changes and... Um, Smith comes into the 23. I don't think he played last time. Cunningham moves from the outside. Uh, so the loose forwards into the lock. And then Jenkinson still same, same. Sawyer, Van der Smith, the big Namibian. And then uh, John Rich. Apologies for the pronunciation. As your captain at number eight. So um, largely guys who played up against Korea a couple of weeks ago. Coombs and McNeish is a different 9-10 combo. Gregor McNeish, he's got a bit of a Scottish connection and could end up playing Scotland if they qualify for the World Cup. Uh, he kicked the winning penalty in that game, the clutch one, like on 80 minutes when they were behind. Uh, he was on the bench for the last game. Likewise was Jack Coombs. So it's a little bit of a uh, rotational thing seemingly from the coach. Uh, Tom Hill and Ben Axton Burrett are the same midfield. So a bit of continuity for them. Matt Worley swaps wings and uh, Guy Spanton comes into the left wing because the uh, the other winger, uh, Higson Smith, got red carded in the first minute. He's a big unit of a guy to one of the Korean guys in the first minute. So, um, yeah, he's obviously not available. And then Nate De Thierry, uh, he's played for counties. He seems to be a bit of a journeyman at this point. He's played rugby all over the shop, but he scored um, the last try for the uh, for the Hong Kong guys at the end of their game as well. And um, he seems to be a guy who's got a bit of a long-range boot as well. They did try him with one kick, although he missed it. So, um, yeah, uh, the Korean squad, Korean squad, Hong Kong squad, as I mentioned, like I looked up some of the players. There's a PE teacher. There's like a lawyer. There's some some guys who seem to be kind of journeymen playing rugby in different parts of the world, but it's certainly not a squad I'm very familiar with. Like I mentioned, they got to try through a mall. They got to try after the mall. got advantage. A lot of these guys played for that South China Tigers squad that was in Global Rapid Rugby a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, if you remember. So yeah, a lot of these guys have played rugby on the round about that Super Rugby or Mitre 10 Cup level. But um, a lot of them are playing that kind of same semi-professional competition in Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Premiership. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll have to see how things go. As I mentioned, Tonga, with the bookies, I couldn't find a point start, but they're about like 93% favourites. So I believe it's the first meeting between the sides. 
Um, but certainly uh, Hong Kong are big time underdogs for this one. They did have a 15-0 lead at halftime against Korea and kind of let their foot off the gas in the second half, but admittedly with a player down. They even had 13 men on the field for a while when they had a yellow card too, so I guess they still did uh, did pretty well to win that game. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts from the Sunshine Coast. I think it's a 5.30 kickoff um, locally, which is like a 7.30 p.m. kickoff over here in NZ. And uh, for you guys in like Europe and other parts of the world, it'll be morning. I would imagine it's probably not on at the best time for Hong Kong. Is it? It will be kind of a late morning. Yeah, no, actually, no, but that'll be a pretty decent home in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong won't it? It'll be uh, like lunchtime or early afternoon. So, um, yeah, you guys like to let me know your thoughts. Do you think Tonga is going to smash uh, the Hong Kong Scott side as they kind of should on paper? Or do you think we've seen a lot of history made in recent times with Ireland against the All Blacks and, uh, you know, Wales down in South Africa winning a game? We've seen a few upsets. Can you see... A kind of uh, what would seem to be a big upset from Hong Kong over Tonga. You guys let me know your thoughts and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.